Hey guys, welcome back. So today we are going to be taking our first look at the method of variation of parameters to solve non-homogeneous differential equations like this one right here. So we do see that we could use the method of undetermined coefficients like we have been since we have this exponential right here. But for the purpose of this video, we are going to go ahead and proceed using the method of variation parameters. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first step as always is to find the homogeneous solution. So we will be solving first this guy right here equals zero and we can jump straight into the characteristic equation and we can factor this and so we have real roots r1 and r2 which are equal to negative one half and one which gives us a general form for our homogeneous solution of c1 e to the negative one half t plus c2 times e to the t so now that we have our homogeneous solution, if we were to proceed using the method of undetermined coefficients as we have been in the last few videos, the next step that we would do is we would assume a particular solution form of a times e to the t. And then we would notice that this term is included in the homogeneous solution, so we would have to modify it by multiplying through by t. But since we are using variation of parameters, we don't have to worry about this at all. So we don't have to stress out about assuming the right particular solution form. What we do is we take the homogeneous solution, we drop the coefficients and replace them with functions. So we would assume a particular solution of the form u1, which is a function of t times e to the negative one half t, plus u2, which is also a function of t times e to the t. And this should remind you of something. This should remind you of the reduction of order that we used several videos ago. But this is like reduction of order on steroids because we have a u1 and a u2. So the cool thing about various and parameters is that not only do we not have to worry about assuming the right particular solution form, but it also works for a larger class of non-homogeneous equations. So in the undetermined coefficients, we were only able to handle the exponentials, the sine and cosines, and the polynomials. But with variation of parameters, we can generalize that to be able to handle a lot more non-homogeneous solutions. But anyway, I know we could use undetermined coefficients in this example, but we are going to go ahead and use various parameters instead. So the very next step is to plug in our assumption of yp back into our different equation and then solve for our unknown functions u1 and u2. So let's go ahead and differentiate yp twice. So we have to use the product rule on here. So we get negative one half u1 e to the negative one half t plus u1 prime e to the negative one half t plus u2 prime e to the t plus u2 times e to the t. Now there is a very important thing that we need to do next and that is impose a constraint on our problem. So in yp prime, what we do is we take the two terms that have the primes on them, so the u1 and u2 prime, and we say, okay, let's let these guys sum to zero. And the reason why we do that is to prevent higher order derivatives from entering the problem. And it's also a necessary constraint that we have to impose so that we can actually solve for u1 and u2. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite yp prime as negative one half u1 e to the negative one half t plus u2 times e to the t. These guys, they sum to zero, so I'm not gonna worry about them yet, but this fact will come to play later on. So let's keep that in the back of our minds for now. So next, let's go ahead and differentiate again to get yp double prime. So here we get negative one half u1 prime e to the negative one half t plus one fourth u1 e to the negative one half t and then plus u2 prime e to the t plus u2 times e to the t. So we have our three different terms and we can throw it back into our differential equation now. So when we do that, we have two times yp double prime so that gives us negative u1 prime e to the negative one half t plus one half u1 e to the negative one half t plus two times u2 prime e to the t plus two u2 e to the t. Then we have a minus y prime. So a minus, or actually it becomes a plus, one half u1 e to the negative one half t and then minus u2 e to the t. And then we have a minus y which is minus u1 e to the negative one half t, and then minus u2 times e to the t. And all of this has to sum up to the right-hand side, the non-homogeneous part, which is two e to the t. 
So another cool thing about variation and parameters, if we have done all of the algebra correctly, then all of the terms that don't have primes on it should cancel out. So for example, we have a one half u1 e to the negative one half t right here. So this guy, and here is another one right here. So now we're at one u1 e to the negative one half t. And then we have a minus u1 e to the one half t. So all these guys cancel out. And we can move on to looking at these guys now. So we have a two u2 e to the t minus a u2 e to the t and then minus another one. So all these guys cancel out as well. And what we are left with is only the terms with the primes, which means that we are on the right track. It's a good way for a mental check to make sure that you're doing this right. So let's go ahead and rewrite that. Negative u1 prime e to the negative one half times t plus two u2 prime e to the t. And this all equals two e to the t. But that's not the only equation that we have. Remember this guy right here. We have u1 prime e to the negative one half t plus u2 prime e to the t has to equal zero because that is the constraint that we imposed on this problem. So we have two equations and two unknowns and we can solve that. So the easiest way to go about solving this is by adding the equations together. So if we add them together, what we get is three u2 prime e to the t is equal to two times e to the t. And here we can divide by three e to the t and what we get is u2 prime is equal to two thirds. And then from there we can easily integrate it. So u2 is equal to two thirds times t. And I'm not gonna worry about my constants of integration because those are gonna end up getting absorbed up into these constants right here. And I will point that out later. But um, for now we're not gonna worry about that. So we have an expression for u2 and we also have an expression for u2 prime. So let's go ahead and use this expression for u2 prime and substitute it back in to our second equation. So when we do that, we have u1 prime e to the negative one half t, and then plus u2 prime, which we determined to be two thirds, and all this equals zero. So let's go ahead and rewrite this as u1 prime e to the negative one half t is equal to negative two thirds e to the t, and then we can divide both sides by e to the negative one half t, which gives us u1 prime is equal to negative two thirds e to the three halves t. And then from there, we can easily integrate it. And again, I'm not gonna worry about my constants of integration, because again, they are going to get absorbed into it. So when we integrate this, we get negative four ninths e to the three halves times t. So we have successfully solved for our u1 and our u2. And that means that we are ready to assemble our final solution. So the general solution is always the homogeneous plus the particular solutions. And in this case, the homogeneous solution is C1 e to the negative one half times t plus C2 e to the t, and then plus the particular solution, which is U1 times e to the negative one half t. So we have plus our U1, which is negative four ninths. So I'm gonna change that to a minus. So minus four ninths e to the three halves t times e to the negative one half t. And then we have plus a u2 times e to the t. And our u2 is just 2 thirds t. So plus 2 thirds t e to the t. And we can simplify this third term right here. So I'm gonna rewrite this as c1 e to the negative 1 half t plus c2 e to the t minus 4 ninths e, and this simplifies to actually e to the t plus two thirds t e to the t. And since these two guys are linearly dependent, I'm just gonna absorb this negative four ninths into the c2. And I'm just gonna go ahead and rewrite our final, final solution as c1 e to the negative one half t plus c2 times e to the t plus two thirds times t times e to the t. So this is our final answer. And again, just to point out for completeness, if I were to keep track of my constants of integration right here when I integrated u2 prime and integrated u1 prime, if I would have kept up with those constants of integration, then they would have shown up in this equation and would have been absorbed just like this negative four ninths was absorbed into the C2. So there you have it. We have our final answer right here. So also notice that we still end up with this factor of t times this e to the t, just like we would have ended up with it if we modified our particular solution and went with the undetermined coefficients process. So we didn't have to worry about any of that since we use various parameters and we still ended up with the right answer. So anyway, that's it for this problem and I will see you guys later.